Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. Children, I want to thank God and welcome you back today. Especially want to dedicate it to the people in hospitals and nursing homes and jails. And wherever you are today, we thank God for all of our viewers and listeners also by radio. And we love the Lord and appreciate Him. And, and I'm going to continue my message here today out of the book of 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter. And especially I want you to notice the commandment that Paul told Timothy and were to keep even to this day. And children, I know there's a lot of division among us and, and, and the many branches out here that represent Christ. But you know, if you study your Bible, in the book of Acts is where it all started as far as the Lord building a church. And I'm glad he said up on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And also, he told Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth, I'm going to bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So that means right now, they can either bind us or loosen us. And if we're bound, then when we comes judgment time, we'll still be bound. If we're loose by obeying the word of God, then in the day of judgment, we're going to be loose with the Lord. So children, it's up to us because if you remember in Mark 16, Jesus told these apostles to preach a gospel to every creature and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So you do have to believe the gospel and then God will seal you with that Holy Spirit of promise. But now today, I want you to listen what Paul wrote here in the book of 1 Timothy about the 6th chapter and study all of that chapter out, but verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Now that's where you need to be today. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now listen to verse 13. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witness a good confession. Listen. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, notice verse 15. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, king of kings and lord of lords, who only, that's Jesus, hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Now, verse 15, Paul said that in his times God is going to show who is that blessed and only potentate, which means a supreme ruler, who only is king of kings, lord of lords, who only has immortality, dwelling in the light that no man can approach unto. It's Jesus, children, that has that light that no man has seen, nor can see. See, children, there's a part of Christ that they could see. And that was that veil of flesh. But as far as inside of him, that's where all the glory and the beauty and the power of God was. And Jesus had to come in flesh and blood and suffer for us so we wouldn't be lost. Now you're in a great deceived hour. 
and it started the end of doubting me as far as the Gentile age and the real church of being persecuted. It began whenever, especially 325, when they had separated God and divided Him into three distinct persons and put a decree that the whole world believed that and started the doctrine that not only separated God into three persons in the Godhead, but that denied the only Lord in our God, Jesus Christ. Why? Because they rejected Him and His fullness. Name. I want to show you something in the book of Colossians. Turn with me. Because the teaching out of the Roman Catholic doctrine is that there's only one God, but He is manifested or separated into three distinct persons. The Father, separated from the Son, separated from the Holy Ghost, and they say yet all three are as one because they're all of the same God. But children, they ain't a bit of that truth. Now, if you study enough of the Bible at all, you know that whatever pleases God is what's right. And I want you to turn with me to the book of Colossians, chapter 1. And you notice verse about 15, because this all is representing Christ here. Who is the image of the invisible God. Now an image is what man was created in the likeness of. That's the form of God. That's what God would look like in his person. But back then it wasn't flesh and blood at the creation, but still it was an image. And he would appear in the Old Testament to Moses and different ones on the mountain. And he did sit down with them and ate and drink. Well, anyway, if you'll notice here, it's Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now, watch verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Come on. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. That means everything comes into being. He's the head of the body, the church, the Pope's out of this, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Now watch this, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Now watch verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Now, if it pleased the Father that in Christ all fullness dwell, why would you want to separate it? Go to Colossians 2 and verse about 8 and 9. Read it with me. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, beware lest they spoil you, and not after Christ. Listen to verse 9. For in him dwelleth, are you reading it? All, A-double-L, -L, all the fullness of what? The Godhead bodily. And you're complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Now children, how in the world could the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost be three distinct persons, co-equal, which means they all have the same authority. Well, see, there's a problem. Jesus is not that middle man. He said, I'm the first and I'm the last. I'm the beginning, I'm the ending. And all the records you read from prophecies out of the book of Moses, the law, and the prophets, everywhere, it talks about only Jesus. Don't it make you wonder, where did these other two come in from? Because they're not in the Bible. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Well, somebody come along and said, no, honey, there's three. Well, it didn't start out the book. 
But why did it build up so long? Well, it started in 300, supposed to be 25 B.C. or whatever, children, or A.D. But anyway, the Nicene Creed, the Roman Catholic doctrine is preached to us, and everybody that came out from among them kept on to that doctrine. And children, there's no Bible. I mean, even 1 John 5 and 7 tells you that on record in heaven, there are three that bear record in heaven. It never said three persons. But on record, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. See, children, they use the Scripture, Matthew 28, 19, as their way of separating God into three persons. But they say they're all equal. Well, see, how could Jesus have all the fullness of God in him? And then them other two be equal. How could Jesus raise from the dead and say all power is given unto me in heaven and earth? How in the world could Paul say at the name of Jesus every knee would bow? And what are we going to do here where we just read you in Colossians 1 that the Bible said all things were created by him for him. John said, without him there was nothing made that was made. He was in the world, the world was made by him. Children don't sound to me like he's equal. Sound like to me, sounds to me like he's all of it. And the Bible backs that up. I know it's a, 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 a time for you to really get earnest with this. Because I take pleasure in searching him out. Look here, all through the prophets it's written of him. You can't separate him into three. There's no Bible for that. God can't be three because he's one Lord. See? But turn with me. I just turned to it. Isaiah 9 and 6 in your own Bible. And I believe every one of you that will read it, you know who it's talking about, don't you? Come on. Verse 6. Listen to it. Isaiah 9. For unto us a child is born. Somebody help me out. Who is that? Isn't it Jesus Unto us a son is given. See, didn't he give his life? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now watch this part. And his name. Now what is his son's name? It's not son, is it? That should call his name Jesus. He was already Christ. Unto you born this day in the city of David, the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. But his name was called Jesus. And that's why they baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Christ don't just mean the anointed one. It means God himself. Because he's the one that come, your God will come. All right? Now, listen to his name here according to the scripture. Search your member. The government shall be up on his shoulder and his name shall be what? Called Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, hold on. His name, Jesus' name, right? Because that's the Son. He was called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All right, drop back to the seventh chapter in verse 14. Listen to this. Seventh chapter, Isaiah, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, that's Jesus, ain't it? And shall call his name Emmanuel. See? Now, Emmanuel interpreted in the New Testament is who? God with us, right? So his name is Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Now, that's why that Jesus had to open the apostles' understanding because they didn't fully understand what the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost was. Because he was standing there as a young man about 30 some years old preaching. And I mean, the Jews didn't like the idea of Jesus being a man making himself God. And Jesus told them many good works I've showed you for my Father. Which of these works do you stone me? 
They said, for a good work, we don't stone you, but because you're a man making yourself God. That's why they wanted to get rid of him. See? But children, who else could look at you when they said to the Jews, said, you're not even 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? What did he answer him? Before Abraham was, I am. Now that'd make me mad too if I didn't know truth. See, children, there's no way possible there could be three persons in the Godhead and then one of them taking all authority. It won't work. Jesus in him dwelleth a double L, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Never was God ever separated other than when he died on the cross. He had to give that spirit up for a period of time, three days and nights. And then he came right back into that body. I mean, who do you know that could tell the Jews, sir, destroy this temple? Talking about his body. And in three days, I will raise it up. He said, I will. Peter said, God rose him from the dead. Paul did too. So what, what do we get out of this? Jesus had to be more than just a person they could see. Because in him was all power. And that's why he could say destroy the temple in three days. I'll raise it. Children, it's not that hard to understand if you study. Because the first thing you need to learn, who is the father of him? And the answer is the Holy Ghost. Because who put him in the womb? That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. It had to be his father. And Jesus said it was. Now, that spirit was filling the heavens and earth, but yet it was proceeding from him. And he had to subject himself a little lower than angels. And when he became flesh, then he became obedient to the death of the cross, to suffering, persecution, finally taking beatings. I mean, you would have never done him like that unless he loved you. <laughs> no greater love than a man laid down his life for his friends. Honey, they ain't nobody could took that life. I got the power to lay it down, and I've got the power to take it up. You don't mess with him unless he gives it. That's why you don't get nothing out of him unless he gives it. Hallelujah. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. See, children, we need him. He can make it without me, but I sure can't make it without him. And if ever you need to search the scriptures, children, I'm not getting up here putting a show on. I'm not in this for crowds. I'd love to have a, a, a tons of people. But I mean it because I know we're going to the end here. And I want to get on that straight road. I want to stay on that path that leads us to the end, to the straight gate. Children, he said, wide is the gate. Broads a way that leads to destruction. Is it important for you to know who Jesus is? Honey, he said, I'm not giving my glory to another. Now, there's doctrines out here. And I know you little people may not understand it because these educated so-called scholars is what's deceiving you. But they're teaching to you that Jesus Christ was a Jew. Honey, he was not. He was God all the way through. He was the eternal word that was made flesh. No Jew was made flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. See, Jesus came out of that glory that he was in before the world was. The bosom of the Father. He was right in the middle and the heart of the Holy Ghost and it all was one person and one spirit. But he had to step out of that glory state and take on in flesh and blood. When he did it, he became a little lower than angels. It's simple to understand. So to get into this world, now you know he can do anything he wants to, but the world needed blood. They were lost. The whole world, not just Jews. The whole world was lost. We were dogs having no hope. Jews were the lost sheep. 
And without shedding of blood, there was no remission. So when it said God so loved the world, that's why Jesus has to be more than just God of the Jews. Paul said, is he God of the Gentiles? It's the same one. The rock that led them through the wilderness, didn't Paul say that rock was Christ? Who do you think Paul was persecuting? The rock, Christ. Because he was still under the law in his mind. But Christ became the end of it. Now, I know it's hard for people that's been taught contrary to truth. But I believe while we got the time, we need to really seek God. And I'm asking you, and I mean it with everything in me, you at home, if you have to get away, study your Bible. You go through the book of Acts, you go anywhere in that Bible you want to. You find out how they baptized. And if they baptized in the titles, then you've got it. But if they didn't, you need to know what the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is. Is it important? Well, according to Peter, that stone was set at naught of the builders, then and even now. But it's become the head of the corner. And I might as well read it to you to prove what I'm saying. I can quote it, but I want you to go with me to Acts 4. Just turn through it again. Listen to this. Go to verse 7, Acts 4. And when they had sent them, the apostles, in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this, that miracle of healing? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. How in the world could he make a mistake anywhere? when the man was full of the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means is made whole, listen, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. Now everybody listen to verse 11. This is the stone, see, which was set it now to you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Now read it with me. Neither is there salvation in any other. Well, can you be saved in anybody else? No. Okay. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And what name was that? Jesus Christ. Children, as God is my helper, the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, has a name. Is it important? Well, you'll have to read your Bible. Because Luke 24, Jesus told them, to preach repentance and remission of sins in his name among all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. Did they do that? Go through the book of Acts and see. I read you Acts 2.38 where they baptized in his name. You can read Acts chapter 8. When Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ, they were baptized in his name. And if you go through Acts 19, Paul asked the disciples of John, that were just coming in. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He said, we've not as so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Now, Paul said, how were you baptized? Come on. They said unto John's baptism. John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, believe on him that is to come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on the Holy Ghost fell on them. Well, Acts 10, first message to the Gentiles. After the Holy Ghost fell on them, Peter said, Can any man forbid water that these which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we should not be baptized? So what did he do? He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. So the Lord has a name. Those are titles. Lord, Son, Father, 
God, that's all titles. The only name is Jesus Christ. Because Peter preached in Acts chapter 2. You at home read your Bible. He never put nothing in front of Jesus. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. That's why you do everything in word of deed in his name. Come on. Honey, I can't help it. But it was God that exalted him. It ain't nothing to do with us. It's what God did. Now, go with me to the book, I believe it is, of Philippians. See if I can find it here right quick. Philippians chapter 2. Listen to this. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Listen to it. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Thank God. And was made in the likeness of men. See what he did for you. The form of God became the form of a man. Not by two persons. But bringing that person into a baby state. Birthed by the Holy Ghost. In a little virgin that had never known a man. God help you understand this. Don't get in your heart that Jesus was a Jew. If he was, then human blood saved you. And my Bible said in Acts chapter 20 and 28 that he purchased the church with his own blood. Children, it's not the blood of men nor the will of man, but it's God's own blood that he purchased the church. Now, my time's about up here. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Here it is. Wherefore God highly exalted him. Give him a name that's above ever name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See there? Perfect man. And got a beautiful name. So children, I plead to you, study these things out. Because I'm not saying this to separate, but to bring people to a little more deeper of it. It's there. And if you can find a fault in the name of Jesus, God help you. I can't. So till our next program, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.